Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm going to do something that I frequently forget to do and, and share a little bit of information about how I set up and make a part. In this case, I'm gonna talk about the 120 to one worm and gear set that I'm making for the new spindle setup that I just talked about in an earlier video. Hope you enjoy it. Basically, most worm gears are um, a form of helical gear that you cut uh, without compensating for the, the helix angle. So the first thing to note about the setup is that you have to take the, the correction, the table, uh, <clears throat> the table angle that would normally correct for the, uh, the lead angle on the hob, you have to take that back to zero. You want the you want the, the true lead or the true helix of the, of the hob to appear in the, the gear form. So there's gonna be a very slight, like a degree and a half uh, helix with this gear. Uh, this is an M1 or Mod 1 um, uh, hob. This is the same hob that I used to cut the gear with. And um, so the first thing is you've gotta zero out the uh, the, the kind of lead correction for the, the hob. And the second thing is you have to find the true center of the gear. And the way I do that is by taking a piece of um, tool steel, laying it against the side of the blank, and then putting it against the side of the, uh, the hob. Uh, yeah, the hob's a known diameter, so uh, I just line up the back of the, of the gear against the, the side of the, of the tangent point of the hob, and I zero out a dial indicator, the, this dial indicator here on the x-axis, and then I uh, drop the table down and move the, move the gear the calculated amount to bring it into alignment with the spindle. Um, it's, it's really uh, not that uh, complicated or difficult to do, but it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, I had to kind of walk myself through the first time I did it. Um, anyway, hopefully that's clear and, and provides a little bit of, uh, of illumination. Uh, I will tell you, since I've got the camera running, uh, this came out pretty good. I, I repurposed an old aluminum uh, 90 tooth gear uh, to be 120 tooth worm gear um, for the new machine. Uh, this is aluminum, but uh, honestly, I don't think the material matters that much because uh, this gear on the machine, if I, if I do this right, this machine, this gear is only gonna go through maybe a hundred full revolutions in its entire life. So um, you think about it, all you're doing is just generating the lead angle for a relatively narrow gear. So uh, it's gonna see a relatively few rotations. And I cut this, um, I cut this worm gear on my lathe. It's a, it's a Mod 1 worm gear. Uh, my lathe, uh, thankfully, is set up so that I can just make a minor tweak to the change gears on the lathe and produce this, um, this screw. Um, if I were making a hob, I'd be cutting the same, uh, the same thread um, and then doing the cutting details to that afterwards. But uh, I think this is actually going to work pretty well uh, for the purposes uh, I have, and again, I'm, I'm not going to do anything fancy with this uh, other than just make sure that everything's properly supported and aligned. And I think honestly, lubrication, I'm just going to smear a bunch of grease on it uh, and let it go because, you know, cutting a typical gear, you know, this, um, this worm is probably going to see about 20 revolutions or something like that. It's uh, not very much. Um, if you're wondering why this is so big, 
is because I wanted to match the helix angle for the hob. So this is basically the same diameter as the hob. Uh, and that's the only reason it has to be that big. If I had a smaller hob, I could have made a smaller worm. But um, because of the way I cut it, taking the uh, lead correction out, you can see this lines up very nicely with the, uh, that's in, in hard mesh there. And it lines up very nicely with the, um, with the sides of the, the gear. So that's, uh, that's what that's all about. Um, so I hope this helps. I wanted to put this brief video out just to, um, to uh, start to get in a rhythm of updating with progress on this new spindle project. Now, I hope you enjoy it. If you do, uh, please feel free to hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, and, uh, and comment if you have any questions. Um, I'd be willing to, uh, to take them on. Thanks. Well, here I am. I'm cutting a uh, 120 tooth worm gear in aluminum. It's mod one. And in this case, I, I'm watching the dial indicator there. I've got 10 thousandths depth of cut so far. And, uh, and it's actually looking pretty decent. The teeth are tracking just the way they should. Uh, this is a soft enough material that I don't need the outboard support. Um, so I'm basically what I'm doing is taking it up five thousandths at a time and waiting for the, the spindle to go around one time. So I'm, I'm feeding upward with the, uh, with the knee. There are several different ways to make uh, worm gears. Uh, one is to use a fly cutter on a hob, on a hobby machine. And another one is to use a, a tapered, uh, a tapered uh, hob that you feed in tangentially. The third way, which is not um, noticeably worse, I guess, for my purposes, is just to to feed the, the work to the hob radially. Track the overall depth of cut um, and, uh, and stop when it gets where it needs to be. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I've, I've done this a couple times before and it seems to work out. Um, so far, so good, I would say. Well, this is interesting. It's going well. And you can kind of do this by ear. If you listen, you'll hear it stop cutting. Right there. And now I'll feed in another five thou. You can hear it immediately start cutting again. I could probably do this a little faster, but it's taken me a couple of days to get this set up. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna make it last. out pretty good. Teeth are pretty small compared to what I'm used to, but it's uh, it's mod one. 120 teeth. I made this out of an old aluminum 80 tooth gear that was excess to need. And uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to make a worm uh, that's just a slight bit smaller diameter than the hob I use. And uh, which I'm told produces a crowning effect, so you get uh, um, more of a uh, contact pattern in the center of the worm gear. So anyway, uh, this was uh, this was pretty good. This is the most highest tooth count I've made on my machine, and uh, 
I have to say that it doesn't look like I missed any teeth, so good deal.